Hey, good morning. It's uh, Friday, July 15th. Again, welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7. Yesterday, in the video, we talked about being lost in the pain of life from Psalm 22. Well, this, now we're going to look at the second portion of Psalm 22, where God answers the pain. Literally answers the pain. That's where our hope is. The psalm, in some ways, in many ways, prefigures the crucifixion of Christ. As Jesus quotes it, it's reminiscent of what happened at the crucifixion. But it's also real life for David and the things that he's experiencing. So it serves two beautiful purposes for us. The first portion, you'll recall, David is lost in pain. It's overcome him. And so he's crying out to God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? Even though I'm pleading. My God, I call day by day and you do not answer. And by night as well, I am not silent, but you don't answer. See, that's the first part of the first 20 verses of Psalm 22. There's this agony. Woven in there are some elements of praise and how God used to be, but the agony, the hurt, <clears throat> the, the grief, the overwhelming pain of life is crushing him down. And we looked at that last night. But then it's like a hinge. Verse 21 is like a hinge. It opens a door to the hope that we have. So in verse 21, David says, deliver, starting with verse 20, deliver my life from the sword, my prized possession from the power of the dog, and then save me of the mouth, from the mouth of the lion, and from the horns of the wild ox. And then abruptly in the Hebrew, you see our English translations mess this up sometimes because you want to smooth things out. But Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild ox. You have answered me. Most of our translations will do something that will interpret it and say, you've rescued me, or you've saved me, or you've, you know. But this answer me is directly related to the beginning of the song. I call by day and you do not answer. But then in the middle of this pain and this hurt and this agony, you have answered me. The answer will be God's answer. And when we point to Christ, it's where it's helpful to see the comparison here is Acts chapter 2, but it makes very clear the comparison is real. Jesus endured great pain and great suffering. And God's response was one of being faithful. But not when Jesus was crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? but only until the path, the task <clears throat> is accomplished, the journey is complete, the path done. And then God responds to him and raises him back up. Well, that's our hope here. So then David rejoices, I will tell your name to my brothers in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. Fearers of Yahweh, praise him. And then, this is the hope that we have in our pain. This is God answering our pain. For he is not despised. He has not detested the affliction of the afflicted. Nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried, God heard and he answered. This is important here because when the pain of life crashes in on us, when really hard things happen, we feel like we're somehow distant from God or we're not worthy of God or that something's gone wrong. But this portion of Psalm 22 tells us, no, he is not detested by pain and my affliction. Rather, he's identifying with it, just as Jesus did. And he hears our cry. He answers our pain. The rest of the balance of the psalm goes on to be an encouragement to us and bring joy to our hearts and it anticipates the coming of Christ. And indeed talks about how God is going to triumph over the entire earth. 
That's the cool thing. But right now, for us, when we're struggling in the pain, what Psalm 22 is saying for us, the pain is real. It has every evidence of God forsaking us. But he doesn't forsake us. The psalm lets us know he doesn't detest the mess that we're in. Rather, he hears us. And in some ways, what he does for us, that pain may be the op opening, the entrance, to bringing resolution that could not have come any other way. So our pain is not useless. As devastating as it is, and as crushing as it is, it serves a purpose. God hears, and he responds. He responds ultimately in Christ, but he also responds to where we are every day, as he did to David. God answers your pain. God is our hope. And that which was a shambles, that which left us crumpled and in ruins, God will turn in his time and make it an object of great joy and praise. Where we can join with David in praising God and thanking him, crying out to him because he has answered us in our pain. And that's the thought for this day. Thanks so much for being here, and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's, again, such a great blessing to be with you. And uh, God hears your pain, and that's our hope. You have a great day. Bye-bye.